الحمد لله الحمد لله الذي هدى والصلاة والسلام على عباده الذين اصطفى خصوصا على سيد الرسل وخاتم الأنبياء وعلى آله وأصحابه الذين اشتبى أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما صدق الله العظيم الله سبحانه وتعالى has stewarded us with uncountable blessings وإن تعدوا نعمة الله لا تقصوها if we start counting the blessings of Allah, there is no way that we can have, we can succeed in counting them. And not only this, وَإِن تَعُدُّوا نِعْمَةَ Allah. If we try to count the favors we get through, only one blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ni'mah is singular. That if you count one, which means count the blessings that we are getting through only one favors of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we cannot even count how many benefits we are getting just from one of the favors that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us with and of course with all of these different favors that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have favored us with there are some that are more important than others just like the ni'mah of Islam it's a great ni'mah, it's the greatest ni'mah. And then being in this ummah, in the ummah of Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, about which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, khayru ummah, the best ummah. And then giving us the tawfiq of at least trying to practice the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and follow the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, have the love for Allah, for his book, for the sharia of Islam, and for his messenger alayhi salatu wa salam. Similarly, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us a lot of different, different things that are really greater than many other things that we have. And one of these great blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the ni'mah and the blessing of a tongue. This tongue, subhanAllah, the, if you start thinking about it, and then you look at the ayah, وَإِن تَعُدُّوا نِعْمَةَ Allah, Count the favors we are guests getting from this one tongue. What is it that I'm using this tongue for? How many things I'm getting done through this tongue? Just imagine if I did not have the power of speech. What is it that I would not have been able to accomplish from this morning up to this time? How many things we were able to get done because of this blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Forget about the whole life. From this morning up to this time. How many things we did because we had this blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and if this was not there, just think how many of those things we would not be able to fulfill. And we all know, depending on how valuable the thing that you have, accordingly the responsibilities come also. If someone is wearing, uh, is carrying a dollar bill in his pocket, he may not even care about what he has in his pocket. Someone else has hundred dollars bill in his pocket. So he has hundred dollars, his worry is little more and responsibility is greater. 
But now someone else has thousands of dollars in his pocket. Depending on how much we have and how valuable the asset that we carry with us, accordingly the responsibility would increase. A child would come to us, he will give him a dollar bill here, go and give it to your friend. You will trust him with the dollar bill. But we may not trust a child with a lot of other things that we would like to pass it on to other people. Then you look for people according to that, according to the value of the thing that you are trusting them with. As this is a great name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, accordingly it comes with a lot of responsibilities. The responsibilities of the tongue, something that we fail to understand that it's one of the most important responsibility on our shoulder. We have a lot of responsibilities, we are loaded with responsibilities and we all feel that I have a lot of commitments in my life, I have to do a lot of things and we don't realize that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has trusted us with this tongue and as this tongue was given to us, we have been really loaded with responsibility of making sure that this blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is used the right way. And because of not understanding this responsibility towards our tongue, a person keeps on misusing it and misusing it and throughout the day, doing so much with this tongue that would displease Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in a hadith which is in Sahih al-Bukhari that sometimes a person says a word someone says only one word min sakhatillah la yulqi laha bahlan a word that upsets Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala a word that is not acceptable by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. La yulqi laha balan. This person did not even pay attention that he said of anything of that kind. Yahwi biha sab'ina kharifan fi jahannam. Because of that one word, this person is doomed to hellfire and so deep and such a lower place of the hellfire that it will take him 70 years just to get to where he's supposed to be in the hellfire of that one word he said one word and now he's doomed into the hellfire in such a lower position of the hellfire that 70 years just to get where he's supposed to be why sometime when we read these type of hadith or when new people to Islam read these type of hadith they feel that this is being too strict just one word and everything is gone we need to realize Responsibilities. What does responsibilities mean? And we see these responsibilities in every field of life. When the president of the country, he comes out on the podium, he can't just say anything he likes to say. He has to be careful of what he says in public. The type of words, the message, maybe the same message that he's supposed to deliver, but wrong wording, everyone will jump on him. When a person who is responsible is trusted with something, with a position, with anything else, he is supposed to be extremely careful of using his words, of the selection of the words that he would use. He can't come up and start cursing just like a normal person would do and then maybe accept it from that person. <coughs> but from those people will not be accepted. Because it's a responsibility. You're standing at a very important position at this time. So you can't just say anything. And not only this, with everything in this world. With every position, with anything in this world. A person is trusted with something. When people realize that this person is not trustworthy in this position. He is not responsible when he is given this position. You want a person who is responsible. Even for a minor work, you assign a secretary to just attend the phones. So all she has to do is just pick up the phone and answer your, the phone calls. And if she's not responsible, then you won't like that person to be sitting in that at that phone. 
Responsibility is very important. We can take that light. So this word is not just because of that word. This is a responsibility. Your tongue is a responsibility from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now we can understand why. You know, you give someone a pearl that worth a couple of million dollars. He comes back and says, you know, I'm sorry, I lost it. That's the main thing. What would be your feeling towards this person? And now as you are showing your anger to him, he says, you know, yesterday the other guy, he lost a dollar also. He didn't tell him nothing. If he sees something of this kind, subhanAllah, that is gone. Now he is out. He doesn't know the difference between that dollar and between this pearl that he was trusted with. This is the hadith says, لا يلقي لها بانن. He does not care of what he said. This person did not even care. He said it. And now when you ask him, he says, no, no, I was just joking. You were joking? You lost that pearl and you're telling me you were playing with it and you lost it? It was better for you not to present this excuse and just say, you know, I don't know what happened. But you're telling us that you are playing with it. لا يلقي لها بالن. It's a matter of responsibility. We all have been trusted with this tongue by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A person can say, لا إله إلا الله محمد الرسول الله or والعياذ بالله can say the opposite with the same tongue. It's the same thing. But of course, we know the result of both of these words is totally different. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us that example in Quran also. That there are some munafiqeen. They just sit and talk about anything and everything. If you ask them, did you say this? The reply would be, إِنَّمَا كُنَّا نَخُوضُ وَنَلْعَبُ Look at the words of Allah. We were only playing and chatting. We were joking. We were just sitting and chatting. I didn't mean it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, قُلْ أَبِ اللَّهِ وَآيَاتِهِ وَرَسُولِهِ كُنْتُمْ تَسْتَهْزِئُونَ Say, your joke was about Allah, about the ayahs of Allah, about the messenger of Allah, and you were saying you were joking? Don't present no excuse. We are not asking you for excuses anymore. That's it. That door is closed for you because of the use of those words. And read what Allah says next. You lost your iman. You became a kafir now. They said such a word? Jokingly. They are making fun of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The person lost his iman. The person lost his iman. This is what Allah is saying in this ayah very clearly. Were you making fun of Allah or joking about Allah and his ayahs and his messenger? No, no. That's not acceptable. لا تعتذروا. Don't present no excuse. قد كفرتم بعد إيمانكم. You have lost your iman. And once you were mu'min before. بعد إيمانكم. You were mu'min before. And now you have lost your iman and you became a kafir now. Look at the words of Allah. And when we just sit and chat. Exactly what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us and reveals about munafiqeen. Innama kunna nakhudu wa nalab. We are only sitting and chatting. We are only joking. Joke about deen of Allah. And anything that is related to deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not acceptable. We take it as a joke. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, La ta'ataziru. No, this is not an excuse. Something that is really very common and is getting more and more. And sometimes when we hear these type of jokes, it looks like, Wallahu alam, that someone just planned these type of jokes and planted them within the ummah so that we will just repeat these words unknowingly and without paying any attention, just like the hadith of Bukhari that I just narrated, that 
the person says, لا يباني, لا Without paying any attention, without caring about what he's saying, he just said that joke. He just said it. He repeated something that he heard just to make people laugh. The hadith. Reached by Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal rahimahullah, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, وَيْلٌ لِمَنْ يَكْذِبُ الْكَذِبَةِ لِيُضْحِكَ بِهِ الْقَوْمِ Woe to those who lie, who fabricate a lie to make people laugh. وَيْلٌ لَهُ ثُمَّ وَيْلٌ لَهُ Woe to him and then destruction to him. Just, just think, quick look at our gatherings. What do we enjoy? When we sit together, when we sit with our families, when we sit with our children, when we sit with our neighbors, when we sit with our friends, someone starts it, and everyone else, instead of stopping this person, no, this is not acceptable. We, in fact, start fueling that also, and we start adding things to it. This is not acceptable by the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it's something extremely dangerous, but it's spreading, it's spreading. It's a fitna that is really widely spreading in the ummah, and we are not paying attention to it. And I said, most of the time is a joke, and really if we look at some of these jokes, it looks like a Muslim would never even think of bringing up something like this. A Muslim will never make fun of the deen in this manner, of the Kaaba, of Salah, of... Allah of the Messenger, he would, a Muslim would never start something like this. Someone else may have just brought it in, and now we just start repeat, we, we just take it and we keep on repeating those words. We don't care of what we say. This is we are not responsible with the use of the tongue. Some of the historians have narrated a story. Wallahu alam how true the story is, but it is really full of lessons for us. That in the old days, kings used to send their children to some teachers who would teach them the deen. And they would, that teacher would be designated to teach him akhlaq. And another teacher would be designated to teach him the language. And another person for tajweed. And they used to have different teachers for their children. So that as their children will grow, they are masters in all of these fields. And they are uh, suitable for ruling the ummah. So as he sends his son... To a person to learn the akhlaq and that person taught him the hadith like man samata naja a person who stays quiet will always be successful so success in being quiet is not in, in talking a person who has the habit of only talking 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 without thinking he's always he always gets himself into a problem so there are so many hadiths to this effect he heard them and he stopped talking i want to stay quiet The king tried his best with his son to speak. He doesn't want to speak. Man samata naja. I stay quiet and I will be okay. I don't want to get myself into trouble. Now listen carefully to the next part. And try to come up with a conclusion and see what, what do we conclude from it. And that's up to you now. The king assigns a person. He says, stay with my son all the time. Whenever he speaks, let me know. Now, one of these days, the king is going out for hunting. He's passing by a tree, and he passed the tree. After passing the tree, there was a bird sitting in the tree that made some noise. So the king realized, oh, there is a bird there. So he shoot at the bird and killed it. So the boy sees, see, when the bird is spoke, lost his life. It was better for the bird not to speak. The person who was assigned to tell the king that now he, he, I heard him saying something. So he ran to the king and he says, you know, I heard your son saying this. So the king called his son and he says, son, what did you say just now? That's it. I said it. That's it. It's gone. Son, please say it. And now he's begging him to say that word. I would like to hear that word from you. I haven't heard you for, for a long time. And he refused to say nothing. So the king assigned someone to beat him up hundred lashes. After the, he was beaten up hundred lashes. Now, what's the conclusion here? 
See, he should have spoken. But really, the boy at the end says, Subhanallah, I was doing so good until I said those words that if the bird would have stayed quiet, he would not have heard himself. When I said those, those words, then I got bit and hundred, hundred lashes also. So it was better for me not to say, even say these words. Not speaking. This is, this is a hadith that we need to remember really. Man samata naja. And we have a habit. Generally, we all do, including myself, and I know myself, this is why I'm saying it. And really, generally, this is a habit. When we see some people talking about something, and I know something about it, we would like to jump quickly and say something about that thing. We can't control ourselves. It's not, okay, let me hear the whole thing before I say anything. Let me think for a minute what I'm about to say before I say anything. Few people are just joking. So I know another joke now. I remember the joke. So let me quickly say a joke. After I said the joke, I realized it wasn't suitable for me to say this joke in this gathering. But before saying it, I couldn't control myself. And this happens a lot to us. It happens to all of us. We experience that. I'm sure we all remember our situations being in this position. That people are talking and we would like to just get in it and say something about it. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says in a hadith which is narrated by Imam Mundir rahmatullahi alayhi in his beautiful book of hadith at targhib wa tarheeb that a mu'min always thinks before saying something and a munafiq always thinks after saying it. He says it first and then he thinks of what he has said. And a mu'min will think first and then if he feels that this is the right thing to say then he would say it. Again, leading us to the very same conclusion and the same point, and that is responsibility of the tongue. We all are responsible of controlling our tongue, of making sure that we only say what is what is supposed to be said by these tongues. Sayyidina Abu Darda radiallahu anhu, a great Sahabi of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa and I don't know if you remember his title. He is known as Hakim al-Ummah, the wisest person of the Ummah. Just like different Sahaba Ridwanullahi had different titles from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa He was known as Hakim, a wise man. And he says out of the words of wisdom that he told his students, one of the words he said, that we need to teach our souls how to stay quiet just the way we learn a new language. When a person is learning a language and he speaks and he speaks and he speaks and then he learns how to speak, the same way we need to take some lessons of staying quiet. But we don't realize that this is something that we really need to learn. That a lot of time we are with our, with our children and people are saying something and the child wants to say something. No, no, don't say it. Don't speak. This is not a gathering for you to speak. But he cannot understand. How come all of you guys are speaking and then he can say nothing? Same thing is our situation. When we just see people talking and when we see a topic going on, a subject that is being discussed, we like to give our opinions without thinking about it. This is not a sign of a mu'min. This is not a sign of a mu'min, this is the sign of nifaq. Of course, does not mean that by doing this a person becomes munafiq, but it's a quality of munafiq that we need to get rid of, that we need to purify ourselves from it. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was approached by Sayyidina Mu'az ibn Jabal radiallahu anhu for an advice says Ya Rasulullah awsini wa awjiz give me a very brief advice Ya Rasulullah Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said Mu'az amlik alayka hadha control your tongue so Mu'az radiallahu anhu asked Ya Rasulullah wa inna la mu'akhaduna bima natakallamu bihi are we going to be held responsible for what we speak is Allah going to judge us for the words that we speak? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, and the hadith is in Sahih al-Bukhari, Thakilatka ummuka ya mu'az, wa hal yakubbu al-nasa fi al-nari ala wujuhihim aw qala ala manakhirihim illa hasaidu al-sinatihim. Mu'az, what do you think will be throwing most of the people on the hellfire upside down besides the earnings of their tongue? 
most of the people will be thrown in Jahannam, not because well, Billah, they have committed zina or they had the habit of stealing or they were, uh, they, they were eating haram or any of these things. No, it's because of their tongue. Because of their tongue. Now just think about it for a minute. How true that is. For people like us, we are talking about people that are, mashallah, attending the masajid. We are not talking about people that are in the clubs. We are people attending the masajid. Alhamdulillah, we feel that by the grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I'm refraining from most of the major sins. I don't do, I don't fall, get into these major sins. And I fulfill the faraid of Islam. I'm doing good. But what's happening with our tongue? The hadith is in Sunan al tirmidhi During the battle of Uhud, one of the young Sahaba Ridwanullahi was murdered. His mother came. She started wiping the blood and the dirt out of his face and his body. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam was standing there. And while she is cleaning that blood from, his, uh, from her son, she says, Congratulations, my son. You are going to be for sure, you are guaranteed the Jannah. This hadith is in Sunnah Tirmidhi. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam stopped and he says to her, how do you know this? Ya Rasulullah, look at everything he had done. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, وَمَا يُدْرِيكِ لَعَلَّهُ كَانَ يَتَكَلَّمُ فِي مَا لَا يَعْنِيهِ Don't you know that there is a possibility that he had a habit of saying things that would not concern him and those words will lead him to Jahannam? أَوْ يَبْخَلُ Or this person was holding back to things that will not hurt him if he would spend it in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If he had any of these two habits, then these two habits are so strong and so bad that they can wash up all, wash away all of these good deeds that you are counting of your son. And still lead him to Jahannam. Just imagine a Sahabi with all of these amal, a young man who did so much. And now, when his mother is consoling herself by saying that you are, you are guaranteed the Jannah, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, yes, that may be true if he did not have any of these two habits. One, speaking of things that did not, that did not concern him. If he had that habit, this is such a habit that billah, after all of these amal still could lead the person to that side. Or, Keep on holding back to things that will not hurt him if he spend and will help others. They hold back even the minor things, small things that could be spent and will not hurt him. But still he keeps on holding everything back to himself. These two hobbits, even with the greatest amal, they can leave the person to the direction of the Now we can imagine how serious this is. That with all the amal, we think that, okay, I'm doing all of this, what if I just use one word? And then, on top of this, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tells us something, an effect of not controlling our truth. Very important hadith, extremely important hadith for those who would like to at this time now at least we thought of our lives and we say you know I would like to come back to the deen of Allah I have been doing a lot of wrong things and I would like to give up all of my wrong thing doings and would like to start coming and practicing the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says la yastaqimu imanu ab hatta yastaqima qalba no one's iman can be straight until this person's heart is straight this is a long topic by itself but at least we can now understand this much how important it is for us to make sure our hearts are straight not only just the physical body iman cannot be straight until the heart will get straight and his heart can never be straight until his tongue is straight this is what we started with 
Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu attaqullah. This is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala telling us in Quran. Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu attaqullah. All you who believe, have the taqwa of Allah. In order to have the taqwa of Allah, وَقُولُوا قَوْلًا سَبِيدًا Always be straight in your talk. What does straight mean? We know it in the light of a hadith. Not lying and not getting into loose talk. Unuseful talk as we just read in the hadith. وَقُولُوا قَوْلًا سَبِيدًا And if you have that hubbard of controlling your tongue and saying only what's right and what's needed, يُصْلِحْ لَكُمْ أَعْمَالَكُمْ Allah will straighten your deeds for you. Now the rest of the amal will get there. But if this tongue is not under control, a person feels that my, my, my amal are okay. No, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says no. If you don't have no control over the tongue, the other amal will not be perfect. If you say these straight words, and we straightforward with your words, which means be careful of what, you, uh, what, what words we use, then our amal will be straight and our maghfirah will be guaranteed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq to practice on what we have heard in the light of the Quran and the Sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Give us tawfiq to make the right use of this tongue and always use it for things that will please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and refrain from things that will displease Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Aqulu qawni hadha wa astaghfirullah alayhi wa lakum wa lisa'ilu al-muslimin wa al-muslimat wa akhiru da'wana alayhi wa lakum.